It is Mr. Schwanekamp. Welcome back. Today, we're going to continue with what we did last section. So last section, we graphed stuff in vertex form. Vertex form is really easy to graph in, so that's good. Today, we're going to graph in standard form. So they're going to look like this. Uh, y equals uh, ax squared minus bx or plus bx plus c, that form right there. A little more challenging, not hard, but just a little bit more challenging. And then the second video that we're going to do today, um, or in this section, is a combination of the both. It's going from this standard form to vertex form. So that's kind of how we're going to tie this all together. Not a crazy tough lesson, a place where you can make a lot of mistakes um, if you're not careful with your simple math, but not a tough lesson. Let's get to it. So as I rambled through in the startup video, know that this is the standard form of a quadratic. AX squared plus BX plus C. And so we've got a squared section. We've got a uh, linear section that's X to the first power. And then we've got a constant. Uh, that's important to identify here. And we're going to talk through each thing. Um, as we set it up, I really highlighted the wrong things. Let me try that again. So here's what I really meant to highlight. The A in front of your X squared, the B in front of your linear term, and then the C is the constant. That's the setup. Same idea, but I just highlighted weird stuff. So let's talk through it. On number one, what goes in front of the X squared? What's in front of the quadratic value? There is a one there because there's no number. We're going to assume that it is the number one. And so it's a one. My B is whatever goes in front of my X. So in this case, it's negative two. And my C is the constant that's added on the end. It is negative three. Once we found that, we are going to find the X value of our vertex. Okay, again, remember a vertex on our parabola is that spot right there that everything grows from. And so to find the X value of our vertex, we are going to use this formula. Okay, this is something you should memorize. X is equal to negative B over 2A. So, for us, our negative b, so that's a negative negative 2, or a positive 2, over 2 times a, 2 over 2, cool, my x value is 1. All right, so that means, like, I'm going to be able to fold my graph over the line x equals 1. That's going to be the axis of symmetry, okay? That's going to be the line that's going to be able to fold it over. Think of it as a piece of paper. If you fold over that line, it's going to match up on both sides. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug that x value in to our equation. So we're gonna take this equation right here that we have, and everywhere where I have an x, I'm going to plug in the number one. So let's do that, one squared minus two times one, minus three. So one squared is one, minus two is negative two, minus three, one minus two is negative one, minus three more is negative four. So what does that tell me? It tells me that my vertex is at 1, negative 4. Here is my x value, and when I take the x value and plug it back in, that gets me my y value. So on my graph here, I'm going to go to 1, negative 4, and I'm going to put a dot. Once we've found that, then it's going to be very similar to what we did in the last section, which is we're going to use a pattern here. Okay, we could just plug in other numbers if we'd like to. I think a pattern's easier. And so because our a value is equal to 1, Remember what our pattern is for a parabola. The pattern is one, three, five. Up one over one, up three over one, up five over one. Again, if you don't like that, then just plug in two and see what point you get and plug in three and plug in four. But I think this pattern helps a little bit. So it's one, three, five. I'm up one over one, up three over one, up five. One, two, three, four, five over one. Ah, it erased. There we go. Do the same thing on the other side. One three, five. Why am I going up and not down? Because that A is positive. If that A would have been negative, then we would have gone downward. Okay. So remember, this is the vertex. That's where we started from. The axis of symmetry is that line that we can fold over and uh, we know what our pattern is. But the whole key to this was this formula, that negative B over 2A. Let's try it again. This is my A. This is my B. That is my C. Oh, man. We're going big numbers here. I'm going to struggle to do some of this in my head. Let's see what we can do. I'm going to have to cheat here and break out my calculator and not necessarily show it to you because I don't want to pull it up right now. All right, let's do it. Negative B. And so if I'm doing negative B, I'm going to go 
negative 24, because it's this number but negative, all over 2 times a. So it is 2 times a, that's 2 times 3 is 6, negative 24 divided by 6. I can do that math. Let's go. Negative 4, that's my x value. All right. So again, know, know what that means. It means that my graph is going to be able to be split down this line. Okay, that's where the x value of my vertex is going to go. You don't have to draw that line. Uh, that is not a necessary part of a parabola. It's just good to understand. Okay, so this is negative 4. To find my y value, I'm going to plug in. So I've got this equation, 3 times negative 4 squared plus 24 times negative 4 plus 43. So I'm using this equation right here, and I'm plugging in negative 4. Okay, I'm going to do that here on my calculator. Those are numbers are a little bit bigger than I would expect you to be able to do without one. And this is a class that you're going to be able to use a calculator on. So make sure you have one. I'm using Desmos right now on my phone. Um, it's the best way to do it, I think, but you can do lots of different things. Cool. I plug it in. I guess I could have done it 3 times 16. That's not worth it. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting beside myself. Minus 96 plus 43. And when I do all of that, I get negative 5. So what does that tell me? I'm going to negative 4 negative five so boom right there that's going to be my vertex my a is three so since my a is three we're going to use the pattern not one three five anymore but we're going to multiply all of those numbers by three because that's my base and so my new pattern is three nine fifteen okay so this is a, a skinnier parabola because when you have that leading coefficient of a number bigger than one it's going to get skinnier so one two three over one one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine over one. And go from there. Okay, 15 is too much, so I'm not going to do it. And again, if you don't like that method of memorizing that pattern, you could always take negative two and plug it in. If you take negative two and plug it into this equation, I bet you get the number seven. Okay, that's where I'm getting those values from. You can do some different things here. I just like that shortcut method because it's going to make it a whole lot faster to graph. Not too bad. Let's try it again. So this time I didn't give you everything listed out here. If you want to, we can still list it out. There's no problem with that. I don't think you necessarily have to because what we're really trying to get is our x value, which is that negative b over 2a formula. So if I'm doing negative b, well, this is my b, it's 4. So if I'm doing negative b, it's negative 4 divided by 2a. So that's 2 times my a value, which is 1. So negative four divided by two, cool. My x value is negative two. So right here somewhere on this line is where my x value is gonna be. To find my y value, I'm then going to plug in negative two into this equation. So everywhere we have an x, I'm going to plug in negative two. Uh, that's four plus negative eight. So four, remember that is positive four because I'm taking the negative two and squaring it. So it's like negative two times negative two. Notice that when I plug in, I put in parentheses. That's a big mistake students make there. So four minus eight minus one, four minus eight is negative four, minus one more is negative five. So negative two, negative five right there, boom. Uh, my pattern is one, three, five because my A value is just one. And so I'm gonna go up one over one. Up three, one, two, three, over one. Up five, one, two, three, four, five. Boom, there we go. Yeah, all right. Whoa, that's so ugly. I apologize to you. All right, there we go, a little better. That's still rough. Why does that look so ugly? All right, I gotta work on my parabola skills. I've been out of the practice. Is that a max or a minimum, okay? So when we have a vertex right there, we're always going to be able to know, is it a maximum or a minimum? So the thing I always do with this is I always think to myself, all right, that thing is opening up. So where's the vertex? It's on the bottom. If it's opening up from this bottom, is this point right here the highest point or the lowest point in my graph? And obviously, hopefully, you can recognize that that is going to be a minimum. And you could do that really quickly by just looking at this thing in the beginning. Oh, it's positive. So you know it's going to open up. So whatever vertex I find is going to be the minimum. A real simple thing there. If it opens down, you know it's going to be a maximum. Because if my graph opened up like this, that vertex point, that point is going to be on top. So just pay attention to that. Not too bad. All right, last one. A little bit different here. 
so before we do anything else, is it going to be a max or a min? When I find this vertex here, is it a max or a min? And hopefully in your brain you're thinking, hey, it's a negative A value. So a negative A value is going to make it open down. So is that point right there going to be a maximum or a minimum? It should be a maximum. How do I know it's a maximum? Because it's higher than everything else. There's no point higher than that one. All right, let's get back to where we were. All right, we're graphing this thing. So the first thing I'm going to do is find the X value. Negative, ah, that's a B. I swear it is. Negative B over 2A. So it's going to be negative, negative 4, or positive 4, divided by 2A. And my A is that neg negative 2, sorry. Negative 2. Put that together. That's 4 divided by negative 4. 4 divided by negative 4. Oh, that is negative 1. So my X value is negative 1. Then I'm going to find my Y value. To find my Y value, plug it back in. Everywhere we have an X, I, when I plug in, notice that I'm plugging in inside of parentheses every time. It's a good habit. It'll help you be careful even if you're just typing into a calculator. It'll make you not screw it up. Negative 1 squared is 1 times negative 2 is negative 2 plus 4, plus 7, this is plus because I got two negative signs, 4 plus 7 is 11, minus 2 is 9. Cool. So negative 1, 9, there is my starting point. I got to graph it. My A value is negative 2. So my normal pattern would be 1, 3, 5, but it's not going to be 1, 3, 5 this time because my A value, since it's a negative 2, it's going to be negative 2 negative 6, negative 10. I just took my pattern and multiplied by negative 2. So I'm going down 2 over 1, down 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 over 1, 6 over 1, and then down 10 over 1, 10 over 1. Boom. That guy, that guy. There we go. Is it a max or a min? It is a maximum. Hopefully that makes some sense to you. Again, the key to this is the negative b over 2a part. If you can do that, you'll be successful. Um, being able to recognize whether it's a max or min pretty quickly is helpful as well. And then as before, memorizing those patterns. That's what we're looking for. Hope that helps. Let's move on to the next one.